We, the Economics and Finance Society at Faculty of Management Studies, proudly present FinTalks, a series of observations, views and opinions from renowned subject matter experts, economists and pioneers from the corporate world on major economic issues which are shaping up the Indian and global economy as a whole. In our first edition, we try to explore the impact of demonetization on Indian economy and businesses as a whole through an interview with Professor Samrit Kaur, Professor of Economics and Public Policy at MS Delhi. Hello, today we have the pleasure of having amongst us Dr. Simrit Kaur, Professor of Public Policy and Economics at FMS Delhi and one of the most eminent economists of the country today. Thank you for being with us. My pleasure, thank you. Uh, Ma'am, so our first question would be, uh, behind this entire demonetization policy which came across on 8th of November, what do you think are the motives of the government? What is the government expecting out of it? See, historically when we talk about demonetization, it has largely been on account of addressing concerns of hyperinflation. For example, we saw Zimbabwe. Or sometimes it could be only to introduce technical security reasons into the currency when you want to enhance security concerns. However, in India, uh, the government of India has been propagating that the main reason behind demonetization was largely two uh, reasons. First, they call it the corruption and the black money. And second, I would say it's the disruption, but disruption of terrorism activities. So the twin objectives um, which is expected to be handled by demonetization would be the black economy uh, aspect as well as the terrorism aspect. And ma'am, uh, from an economic perspective, what would be the imp impact of such a scheme and what are the expectations of, you know, all these effects yeah. on the country's economy in the long run? Uh, see, handling the first part of the query regarding the uh, corruption angle and the second one, the conflict, most of the people are writing about the effect of this from corruption side and therefore on purpose I will address the conflict side first. Evidence shows that largely substantial amount of terrorist activities are on account of the counterfeit currency. Uh, activities related to terrorism, be it in the JNK area or the left-wing extremism, is because of uh, counterfeit currency to a large extent. Demonetization to the extent uh, can curtail the use of counterfeit currency. We are expecting that uh, two things are going to be affected. One would be the greed component, another is the grievance component. And in order to give a background to this, I would like to quote a work by Collier. I read his book in 2007, The Bottom Billion. And he writes that what are the four reasons behind an economy remaining within a development trap? Conflict was an important trap that was addressed by Collier, along with being landlocked with bad neighbors. India, unfortunately, has a neighbor which, with whom we don't have very good uh, linkages. Also, poor governance, that is also cited as one of the reasons for a development track and natural resource problems. Addressing the conflict, he says that in a conflict-driven economy, we all know when there are conflicts, children are not going to schools, businesses remain closed, governments have to allocate their resources from productive areas, from infrastructure building, towards defense building. So there is a misallocation at least from an economics angle. To the extent our uh, terrorism activities are curtailed, it would be because of two reasons. One is the youth cannot be lured. The greed factor is curtailed because in order to lure a youth, you have to show him a note. If you don't have a note, there's no greed behind joining and becoming an antisocial person. The second is related to the grievance. In conflict-driven economies, there is so much of grievance. You don't have job opportunities, the growth rates are not there. And this grievance motivates you to become antisocial. So if demonetization can actually impact terrorism and curtail terrorism, it will promote growth of that sector. However, very importantly, it is not going to be a one-time game. Continuously, one has to be innovating in terms of how terrorism can be curtailed because counterfeit currency through demonetization is not a step that can be repeated again and again. Mm -hmm. But I think even to the extent a one-time blow has been given to the so-called terrorists, I would be happy and say that it's a step in the right direction. Coming to your second part, the corruption, and probably we would be addressing it a little more. There are concerns with corruption. Rightly, not every corruption is in the form of cash. 
and demonetization means you vacuum cleaned 86% of the currency overnight. But is this 86% of the currency the total strength of the black economy? No, magnitudes are much more. Evidence shows that only 6% of the total economy is in cash. Rest could be in land, bullion, etc. So from uh, going by the same uh, procedure, uh, the government has uh, introduced a few initiatives in the recently proposed budget uh, to move uh, towards a cashless economy to similar growth in the era of demonetization. What else can the government do in the coming few days? Okay. Uh, I think uh, I would like to uh, comment on this with a backdrop on the effect which uh, demonetization has had. From a typical economics angle, if you talk either about the classical theory, the typical MV is equal to PY, when you have reduced your money supply, the price levels are going to go down. With fall in the price levels, people don't have enough money to buy the commodity, so consumption is going down. This leads to building up of the inventories with the firms. And when firms see their inventories are building up, what do they do? Curtail production, curtail investment, growth rates are going to plummet. And therefore, in the immediate next two quarters, uh, it doesn't come as a surprise when most of the companies are actually uh, coming up with figures which are not very rosy pictures. We anticipated that. It is going to happen. You also have the World Bank and the IMF which have projected lower growth rates. IMF reduced India's projected growth rate from 7.6 to 6.6 .6, and World Bank has also brought it down by about 0.6% or so. Given that the growth rates are going to come down, I would like to take it forward in two dimensions. Number one, is it going to be a permanent decrease in the growth rate? Alternate, and the second, if there is a plummet, uh, decline in the growth rate, what has the government done to address this concern? Evidence shows our last demonetization of 1978, we have data to show that consumption picked up within the next two quarters. Investments picked up within the next two quarters of demonetization. Though it's very difficult to compare the two demonetization, at that time, a substantial part of that was actually with the bank and the government. This time it is largely with the public. Nevertheless, the point which is important is that we do expect growth rates to come back to normal at least after about two quarters. Second, what has the government done to address this concern? In a typical aggregate demand framework, you can increase growth rates either by promoting fiscal stimulus, monetary stimulus or through your exchange rate uh, depreciation. The central bank has not brought down the bank rates. And we had the union budget announced last month and we, I am totally for it and at that time also some of the interviews I was giving prior to uh, the union budget announcement, uh, I said I would be happy if this time the government does not confine to the 3% fiscal consolidation, the so called uh, you know the fiscal responsibility budget management, your objective of meeting 3%, largely because you have already had a situation where you have adopted a contractionary monetary policy. Your consumption levels have gone up, investment sentiments have gone down, growth rates are going to come down. And at this time, if the government also adheres to the fiscal consolidation, then the, probably the long-term impact would be, um, it would continue. I was personally very happy um, to see that we did not attain a 3%. However, what makes me happier is not necessarily the numbers, but the composition of that fiscal deficit. And one does realize that a substantial part of this fiscal deficit is on account of capital expenditure and not necessarily on account of revenue expenditure. So to the extent the government has given uh, this uh, stimulus to the right areas, rural sector has been focused agriculture and infrastructure development. I think the government is trying to handle it with the right spirit. So ma'am, uh, initially when they introduced the demonetization scheme, uh, the government was aiming at a windfall of about rupees 3 lakh crores. Now uh, reports have suggested that uh, almost the entire value of the notes that were in circulation back in the system uh, have come back. Uh, but do you think uh, there are going to be any windfalls from this scheme henceforth? Windfall? Okay, fine. You have about 16 lakh crores demonetized. You were thinking that lesser will come back and therefore the liabilities of the central bank would be lower and this windfall will go to the government. I look at it from a different angle. Is this the only windfall? I don't think the government has ever looked at this windfall 
as a measure of filling up its revenue. However, the government would get ultimately the windfall mm -hmm. from objectives which are going to be met through demonetization, but these are side effects of demonetization. To the extent you are promoting a cashless economy, I think you are going to, over time, make these people get into the formal setup. Digitalization is going to impact transparencies, governance, ease of doing business is going to become easier. And once the economy grows from that side, automatically the revenue generations are going to go up. And to my mind, that is what the government ideally looks for, for revenue generation rather than a windfall in terms of the huge amount of money it might have collected as a voluntary disclosure income scheme. Because these are one-time spots and sustainability of the government depends upon sustainability of its revenue stream, not necessarily a one-time stimulus in the form of a windfall gain. Uh, Ma'am, as you stated earlier today and as many analysts have pointed out, only a limited amount of uh, the black money actually is in form of cash. Most of them have invested in different kind of commodities, in real estate, gold, etc. So how do you think uh, the government could move forth in order to bring this black money back into the mainframe? I totally am in agreement with you in saying that uh, demonetization is not the only step that can be adopted to curtail black economy. If you read up some of the reports of the RBI, sometimes in fact demonetization is not even mentioned as an instrument to curtail black economy. However, I would say that to the extent demonetization is a step which is over time reinforced by a package of reforms, that is going to essentially reduce the magnitude of black economy. Uh, what kind of reforms? We need ease of doing business. We need governance reforms, we need the judiciary system to become better, we need transparency, we need political will, we need the public to have faith in the government itself. Unless all these are going to, will not happen, a per se uh, demonetization will not necessarily reduce black economy. Uh, also it is often said that you know, when you are generating black economy, it is a flow, it's not a stop. It's not that one time I take it back from you, it, it does not, it, I've taken the power of yours generating more in the future. So because the generation of black economy is a flow and demonetization is a one-time instrument, it cannot, by the very fact that it's just a one-time instrument, cannot bring down black economy. Therefore, we have to look at it only if it is a part of a package of reforms. Rightly mentioned, a large amount of the black economy is in real estate. We have the Benami transactions. If an act could be passed in terms of how to take care of this real estate sector. Regulation of the real estate sector is very important. And we've also been hearing that there are steps which the Prime Minister already has in mind about gold. And if gold declaration does actually become the norm in future, public will have to declare. If you not declare that amount, the rest gets confiscated. But my spirit of having less black economy largely would not be through confiscation or forced methods but with the spirit of opening up of the economy. What are the causes of corruption? If you have to handle the causes, not the final outcome of corruption, which is black economy. And ma'am, uh, when this scheme was announced on the 8th of November, uh, there was a sudden spike in the amount of bank deposits which were received by all public sector as well as private banks across the country. So how do you think this can be efficiently utilized to spruce up the banking system in India? Uh, Sometimes, you know, when we are talking with others, we keep hearing this concern that probably this was not a wealth out of strategy and all of a last minute demonetization took place. But if you look at it from the larger perspective, I think we initiated the process with a Jandhan, uh, financial inclusion, followed by digitalization, and thereafter came the concept of demonetization. What are the advantages of financial inclusion? Demonetization, obviously, large amount of funds went there. And we do know that large amount of funds have gone to the so-called zero balance accounts, which was uh, set up during the time of the Jandhan. So the government and the public also is aware that these people who set up their accounts with a zero balance suddenly have deposits of more than 2.5 lakh in each of those accounts. Idea would be twofold. One, what does the government do with the data it's going to collect through demonetization. 
And I think the benefits just by analyzing the data are huge. Now it is on the onus of the government how best it utilizes that data. You would exactly know which are the accounts, which are the clustered areas. So the whole nexus between the governments, the commercial banks, the private sector, big businesses and the general, to some extent you will be able to find out where the nexus is. Also, despite the fact all this happened, I still admire the spirit of financial inclusion, the Jandhan Yojana, and demonetization did propagate digitalization largely from an economics angle because people who are not financially included they don't have the capacity to absorb shock shock would be in the form of somebody falling sick at home it could be a health shock it could be an income shock and the stability that consumption gets because of your holding a bank account it has a very important psychological impact on the individual so from that direction if the scheme is promoting I think it is a wonderful side effect to the scheme and I look forward to that happening. And ma'am, uh, with the recent uh, third quarter performance votes being released by most of the organizations, it has been observed that the FMCG industry and automotive industry and quite a few other sectors have been impacted to a great extent by demonetization. Uh, HUL, probably one of the largest FMC firms in the yes. country, reported yes. uh, for the first time in such a huge uh, period, uh, successive quarters with a drop in revenues. So how do you think it's going to impact the businesses in the long run? Demonetization has adversely impacted uh, the manufacturing sector, the rural sector growth rates. This was expected. We knew that the next two quarters are going to be bad. But as I mentioned, elsewhere also if you see, and I talked about the 1978 demonetization, you look up the trend lines and we see that within two or three quarters, our investments have picked up to the earlier levels, consumption levels have also picked up to earlier levels and so have the growth rates. So I don't expect this to prolong. But yes, it was a short term shock. It was a demand shock of a huge magnitude. And the time period to adjust to this was also too short, 50 days and 86% of the currency going out. Who is going to be impacted? FMCG. And therefore, in this particular budget, we were looking for a consumption-induced growth as well as investment-induced growth. Because especially in the rural sector where consumptions have been curtailed, HUL, you very rightly mentioned, and we've also been hearing in the papers, HUL has almost freezed its placements for the next year. So the youth is going to be affected, at least if I belong to an MBA <laughs> institute. I do know that it would affect the placement prospects of students of who are passing out, graduating in this particular year. But that again, I would say it's a short term uh, loss in the hope of a brighter future. And ma'am, with the major initiatives of the government targeting towards, you know, making a transition to a cashless economy in the next few years, how do you think demonetization would bring about a change in the behavioral perspective of the, you know, masses? Would it impact the masses? Would it make them shift to digital platforms in the short run or in the long run? I think it has to. But, but the question is, are you educated enough to use that digital platform? In the rural sector, internet connectivity is poor, mobile phone penetration is poor, and illiteracy is also poor. But in the urban sector, especially in the metropolitan, I think most of us are already onto these online uh, platforms. And personally speaking, at the time of demonetization, I think the first time I went to the bank was after 30 or 35 days because I was comfortable doing the online transactions, but not everybody would do that. So it is a challenge. The country needs to race to this challenge. Uh, how best it can be addressed, everybody has to be involved in it. I think schools, proper schools have to be set up only to propagate digital use, uh, digital as a platform for payments. But data has shown how during those 40 or 50 days, the download of applications of Paytm, Beam and etc, etc multiplied several times. So it implies people have moved to it. Long way to go, but steps have been initiated. <laughs> Uh, that's it from us. Uh, we are extremely glad to have had uh, Dr. Kaur come over and share her views and insights with us on demonetization. It was a pleasure to have you, ma'am. My so pleasure. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.